How's everybody doing? Okay. Uh, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to spend a little bit of time in Hebrews, and then uh, we're going to go <laughs> uh, and move into prayer. I do want to say this to the men. Uh, there's a men's retreat on the 14th. Jocelyn announced it. We've uh, landed on a facility. It's going to be in Live Oak. Um, it is an Advent Christian retreat center. We're going to do one night. We're going to get in. We're going to get out, Okay. We're going to pack a lot into 24 hours. Um, a registration is going to go out this week for that. First 40 that sign up, you get to go. We don't have any more space. So we booked uh, as many rooms as we could. It's really nice facilities, hotel-style rooms. There'll be a little conference area for us in the building that we're in. There's all kinds of fun activity stuff we can do. We're going to make it a spiritual time as well. I'll throw that in there, all right? Uh, it's going to be good, but uh, hopefully just a time to connect and, um, and be with each other, okay? I'm looking forward to it. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We pray that you'll increase our faith, Lord. Fill us with faith. There's a lot of circumstances. I declared favor on this church last week and I felt everything but this week. I've just felt hard, heavy stuff. Uh, this isn't a verse, okay? So disagree with me if you want. Experientially, I've learned over the years that when there's spiritual activity, there's spiritual activity. With one comes the other, okay? And we're all experiencing both. If you're experiencing the depths of the presence of God, there's also gonna be other kinds of activity going around that's not of him and from him. There's gonna be uh, opposition to what God is doing. But we have to walk in faith. We can't lose hope can't lose hope for each other, we can't lose faith in each other, we can't lose faith in what God can do in any given person in any given time. So we have some things at the end of the service that we're going to ask you to circle up and pray into, and um, we're hoping that in the next, what's today, what's the date? Somebody hit me with it. I don't even know what day it is, 20th or 21st, which is it? Okay, 21st, all right. Um, at least some of you are, at least there's confusion in the, in the room, I'm not the only one that doesn't know what day it is. Um, <laughs> Sunday. I do know that. I hope so. Did we all show up on Thursday? Um, so hopefully in 10 days, uh, some uh, final uh, last steps will be made uh, with the new facility. Everything's looking clear. Everything's looking good. Um, we have, we've prayed this one in, that's for sure. Okay. We're about nine months into this deal. Um, and then we're going to have an opportunity to celebrate. Okay the beginning of the next phase of remodeling, but we're gonna celebrate because we're gonna have a house, okay? As a church, we're gonna have a house. So I'm looking forward to that announcement. I'm looking forward to letting you all know um, probably the Sunday after we get back from uh, Labor Day, we'll have final um, uh, one way or the other on that, okay? Uh, God, we love you. Be with us these next few moments. In your name we pray. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Okay. This is the first time I've ever done this, but Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when Melissa spoke, she titled this message, her message, Yes. I think it was Yes to the Bless or something a lot cooler than what I title my messages. But what she didn't know is that I already had a message that I'm planning to give in mid-September with the same title. Uh, uh, not Yes to the Bless, but Yes. And I really felt like 
um, this particular series that we're in, God is the one that's named it and kind of branded it because every, ser- every week since she gave that talk has felt like it's had this yes around it. What are we responding to? What are we stepping into? Even the things that we've seen God do that we celebrated uh, last week with our children's ministry, our new children's ministry director, just these snowball responses of people saying yes. And uh, so I think from now through... Uh, Mid-September, with the exception of a one-off on Labor Day, we're going to be we're going to be in this "Say Yes" series, um, and, and we're going to live there. I think God branded this one, not us. Okay. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. And then, if you go down a few verses, eleven twenty-four through twenty-seven, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ. Really interesting. Hebrew writers looking back and saying Moses, hundreds of years before Christ, did it for the sake of Christ. Really interesting. As of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Okay? Okay. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, the Pharaoh, the famous Pharaoh. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Okay? When I read without faith, it's impossible to please God. Um, I don't like that phrase because um, I don't like to let people down. I don't like to feel like I've disappointed. I don't like to feel like someone, you know, that whole. So when I think about please, at least the way that we use it in our culture, it's this, oh, so God's not, you know, God's, his disposition towards me is just, he's displeased with me, okay? We make it about like who we are. Oh, well, if I don't have enough faith. Oh, so on any day, if I have doubts, like all of a sudden God just doesn't like me, like he just frowns on me, he doesn't want to be around me that day. Right? That's how, that's, just be honest, that's my knee jerk way that I read that text when I see pleased. Okay? So we have to untangle what it's not. Okay? We have to untangle what it's not saying, which is it's not saying uh, without faith, God doesn't choose you before the foundations of the earth and love you. It doesn't say without faith, God didn't send his son to find you. It doesn't say without faith, God didn't reconcile you back to himself and to his body. Okay? It doesn't say that without faith, God didn't extend his grace. Okay? So what does that mean? So when we think about the way that this guy, who would have been a lot less probably emo 2,000 years ago than our, than our culture can be, he wasn't processing everything as emotionally as whoever the writer of Hebrews was. He or she wasn't processing it, processing it as emotionally as we might. It was more of a, in order to do what God's asking us to do in order to do what God's calling us to do in order to honor him with our lives in order to step into his will you cannot do that without faith you cannot step into what God has for you without faith so then he talks about Moses now if you look at Moses' life he grows up in Egypt as an Israelite Okay, he was this crazy story where his mom puts him in the basket down the Nile, right? He's found by the Pharaoh's daughter, brought into the Pharaoh's home, raised as a prince, okay? Sees his people being mistreated, loses it, ends up accidentally killing one of them. He was so angry, okay? Has to flee for his life because now he's identified with the oppressed and not the oppressor. So now it's like, oh, so you're, you are one of them. So now he runs into the wilderness and just gets married, starts a family, uh, starts uh, shepherding sheep, okay? For 40 years, just doing it, okay? One day, he sees a bush that's on fire, but it's not burning. He through a series of not understanding a few things on the front end, finds out that the Lord is making this happen. God begins to speak with him from the bush and says, this is a holy moment. What's happening right now is unique, okay? 
So Moses takes his shoes off, which was a sign of honor and dignity. And then they uh, begin to have this exchange in which he's told that he's going to go back to where he fled from and he's going to be the one that God uses to deliver uh, Israel from their oppressors. Okay? A bush is on fire. It's talking. Hmm? Okay? Bush is on fire and it's talking. And it says, I am... Like, which just means all of it. Don't worry about it. I, I can do it all. I've always been. I am. I am. Okay? So Moses says, well, how am I going to roll in there? And, and it's modern day language version, but how am I going to roll into the palace? I'm not really good at communicating things. We don't know if he had an actual speech impediment. We don't know if he was just hyper shy, introverted, we don't know exactly what that meant. We can guess. But his response to the bush that's on fire talking, identifying as the voice of the Lord, is, I don't know that I'm up for that. I don't know that I can do that. Okay? I'm not sure that I'm the right person to do that. Okay? And I just picture the bush start shaking like it's mad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what are you saying? Like, I, obviously, I chose you. You're in the wilderness. There's not like a line behind you. There's no one else here. I'm on fire. I'm talking to you. What do you mean you can't do it? I'm with you. I'm with you. Pick up the staff. He picks up the staff. Now throw it down. Boom, things happen. It turns into an animal, picks it back up, goes back to normal. What do you need to see? I'm with you. Okay? I believe all the time that God is with me, and I struggle all the time with the fear of taking the next step to what he's asking me to do. All of those are always happening all the time to Lesser and greater value in my life all the time. This is something that God has for you. Boom, fear wall, giant wall of fear. Okay? So Moses goes, all right. He steps into it, takes a step. All he does is take a step, okay? When he takes a step, Aaron is brought in. Aaron's a master communicator. So then the, the way that it works out is Moses talks to Aaron as if the voice of God, because Moses was the prophet. Like a lot of the problems a lot of pe people had in the gospels was they had to be convinced that Jesus was greater than Moses. Like Moses was it. Okay? He went up on the mountain and came down with the book, right? So Moses was like the mouth of God speaking through Aaron. And then they had all the things that they did. And then they get all the way out there and then they're stuck at the water, right? And what does he got to do? He's got to take a step. And then they're having the battle where he's losing. He's got to keep his arms up. And then he's got to take a step. One step after another step unlocked unbelievable, miraculous things through this guy who said, I am not up for this. I love it out in the wilderness with the sheep. Please don't ask me to do this. Please don't ask me to do this. We, us Christians, if you're not a Christian yet and you're, you're thinking about it, you, you can decide if you've noticed this about us. Um, we love to use the sacrifice language. Like, God, what do you need me to give up? What do you need me? Like, you just tell me what you need me to give. And I think there's something noble in that. Like, your heart is to, God, I won't buy shoes for six months. You know, like, I'll no more Sour Patch Kids. Okay? And it's, it's difficult for us to think through, like, God, I'll go anywhere. God, I'll, if, if you let me have, the, I'll just go over here for years and, do all that, and we make these deals, and we give these great petitions and sacrifices. And I do think that 
the Christian life is one of sacrifice? Absolutely, if we're going to follow the one that started it. Okay? Absolutely. But I want to read you this verse from 1 Samuel. Samuel replying to Saul. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed is better than the fat of rams. Okay. I want to have some sort of control over the big hard things that I do for him. I want to choose the sacrifice. I want to choose the timing. I want to choose what it looks like. I want to choose when and where and how. I want to have some sort of a say-so over that. I don't struggle with that as much. What I do struggle with is obeying what he asked me to do. That always seems harder. And the Lord's like, look, man, like you want to you wanna go off peanut M&Ms for six years? I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's a bad choice because they're delicious, but it could do it. <laughs> but here's what I have for you. Here's what I'm calling you into. Here's what the next step looks like. And I'm so much more interested. See, we can, we can over-spiritualize risk as well. If we're not taking risk, if we're not doing big things, then we're not truly following the Lord. And I don't, I don't identify risk as the same thing as uh, what God's always calling us to do. I don't necessarily believe that those two always go hand in hand. I believe that sometimes walking in obedience will make us take a risk, but God could call you to do a really small thing, but you know the implications, and it could feel like a greater risk than this ginormous thing that you could make up over here. Why? Because this is where you're confronted with fear. This is what the enemy wants to stop. The spirit's moving in this way. The angels are directing in this way, so that's what he's trying to stop. It's the opposition that makes it feel like the temptation to not be obedient to what he's calling us to. A spouse might say to the other one, don't you see how much I do? You see how much I work? You see how much I take care of this and that? And the other spouse replies, I do see all the things that you're doing. I do see all the things that you're giving up. I do know what you've given up for this relationship. But I want you. I want your heart. I want to know that we're in this. I want to know that we're together. I want to know that we're one. I see all that you do, okay? But I want to know that we're one, and I think the Spirit, I think the Lord, His disposition toward us is that way sometimes, and that He's saying, listen, I really appreciate, and, and it's, it's beautiful, it's neat that there's all these things that we, we want to do for Him. But we can protect ourselves from Him. We can protect ourselves from him by doing all these things for him. We can busy ourselves. And he's saying, when are you going to do some things with me? I want to be with you. When are you going to say, hey, God, more than anything, I want to do what you're doing. I want to cooperate with you. And that's always going to look like a yes. And it's always going to look like taking one step. Just one step of faith. What he asks of us will always require faith. I can promise you that. Okay? What he asks of us will always require faith. Obedience requires faith. We can serve him, please him, and do what, we ask, do what he asks if he steps out in faith. So then the second part of Hebrews 11.6, I'm just going to read the second part to you. It says this, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. He rewards those who earnestly seek to step out in faith. He rewards those who earnestly seek to be obedient. He rewards those who earnestly seek to do what he's doing over what we want to do or over what we want him to do. I've told you guys many times, I've, God's had to kindly let me come to the end of my rope over and over and over again so that I feel like I'm finally at this place to where it's not perfect, but
but I'm more interested in joining him in what he's doing than asking him to bless my ideas. And that's hard for me because I have a lot of ideas all the time. Okay? All the time. But I need to know that they're from him and I need to know that they're what he's doing. I just can't do anything without his favor on it anymore. I just can't. I don't want to learn that lesson again. I want to walk in faith so that I can please him, so that I can do what he wants me to do. If I have a grand idea to win a continent to God and and God's idea is for me to be faithful with three neighbors, that's going to have his hand on it because that's what he's calling me into. You understand? That's better because that's where he's moving and working. It's not better in that he doesn't care about the continent. It's better than that. That's obedience. That's where he has me. That's what he wants for me right now. You have to want that. And that's always going to take a step of faith. That's always going to take a step of agreement with what he's doing and how he's moving in your life. And then there's a reward. Okay? Then there's a reward. So, I believe if we're going to look at Moses, I believe that he experienced at least three rewards. This is, Moses is one of the main examples that the Hebrew writer gives here. And I believe that he experienced three rewards. Look, it's, it even says this. And, and, uh, go back to eleven twenty-four 24 through 27. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ. He, 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 he didn't even know that he was putting his faith in the outworking of the gospel, God's son coming. Okay? There was all this firstborn son stuff with him and Abraham, and they weren't even completely sure of what they were participating in and what they were setting the stage for, which was ultimately God the Son coming here, okay? But for the sake of Christ, okay? For the sake of Christ, he did this. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ and of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, okay? He had everything he wanted because he was looking ahead to his... He was looking ahead to his... Okay, He rewards those who earnestly seek him. Okay? I think there's three ways, at least. At least. And the first one is this. Obedient faith steps lead to breakthrough. They lead to breakthrough. Sometimes we are longing for things. We are praying for things. We are desperate. We are asking God desperately. And then when he begins to reveal what that looks like, fear wall, a million things that can go wrong. Here's who it's going to affect. Here's who's going to be angry. Here's the possible risk assessment. Here's how it could go wrong. Here's what failure looks like. Here's how your life will change. Here's how you're going to be perceived. All of it, boom, fear wall. The moment it's from him, the enemy will attack with a fear wall, okay? That's not, I I I just made that up. You guys like that term fear wall? That's just how I see it. Like you're just immediately like, man, now this is in my way, okay? But it's in that step. So you go, God, I believe, I believe. And he's going, you know, yes, I'm going to deliver my people. I'm going to deliver my people. Take a step. Okay. And then all of this stuff about I'm not a leader, I can't talk, I'm not cut out for this, this isn't who I am, whatever other negative resume Moses had for himself, in that moment he realized that what was stirring in him when he was younger that he handled the wrong way, which was this is an injustice to, the, to my people. God was going to redeem that now and raise him up, and he was going to lead them out. Okay? The second is, obedient steps of faith lead to purpose. Obedient faith steps lead to purpose. 
Now, I don't, I don't necessarily see purpose in the same way of like a, someone might explain destiny, okay? But I mean the purpose for the next season, what God is accomplishing in you and through you for the next season will take a step of faith, okay? It will take a step of faith. And that step could look a lot of different ways. It could be a conversation. It could be a rearranging of a relationship. It could be a financial decision. It could be a move. It could be picking something up. It could be putting something down. Okay, there are a lot of different ways that that step might look, but in order to step into the purpose that he has for you for this next season, it will require a step of faith and you will be confronted with fear. And the quote that I used a couple of months ago that I told you is not in the Bible, but it's one of those that I feel like it should be um, because it's a, a truth. Um, Oh, Jared's trying to add to the scriptures. No, uh, it's a truth that comes out of the Bible. Okay, let's put it that way. Everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Okay? The deep longings of our heart are always going to be on the other side of fear. Okay? Always going to be on the other side of fear. And then the third one is obedient faith steps lead to healing. Healing. Um, I've used the example a few times in the last couple of weeks of Rebecca Bridgman and how, not unlike Moses at all, she had this stirring and this dream to help our church do its first ever VBS. And she was immediately confronted with all the things that she shared a few weeks ago. I've never done this. This isn't something that I know how to do. What if it doesn't work? Uh, what if it, and then she let the cat out of the bag and took the first step, okay? She took the first step and said, I think that we're supposed to do a VBS and I think that I'm supposed to be involved in it and maybe even lead it. And then immediately, people started coming around her that have a history doing it that we didn't even know about. She took one step, okay? And we had an awesome VBS, right? Now, through that, and I don't want to tell her testimony, but I think she shared this here already. She experienced this just renewal and healing of how the Lord can work through her in all the ways that she may have doubted. Okay? But you will not experience that if you do not take the step. It's weird. We go, well, I got to... There, there, um, I got to wait until everything's just right and I'm perfectly healed up and I'm perfectly whole and everything's all put together before I can engage and do anything else. And there are, are there, there, there's a necessity for seasons of rest, okay, without a doubt. But what I find to be true more often than not in my life and in the lives of others is that the only way to truly heal is to go through it, okay? Can't go under it, can't go over it. Got to go through it. Going on a bear hunt. Okay? And you confront the exact same space that you experienced. The pain, the failure, the heartache, you name it. All the negative things. And you walk through it again. And you allow God to heal you in it from the inside out. He heals it from the inside out. That's been true for me. Big time. I made declarations. I'll never do this this way again. Just all, all the ministry things over the last 22 years. You better believe I've made mistakes. Wrong people been wronged. You, oh gosh. And I remember having this will now never. Uh, and then you realize in order to heal from it, you got to face it. You got to go through it. Okay. It's in the, sometimes it's, it seems like, no, wait, don't, don't serve until everything's perfect and ready. Don't, don't give of yourself until everything's perfect and ready, okay? But that's not the way that the, the Lord works. The longer that we just stay back and focus on ourselves, actually the opposite will happen. You'll become more self-consumed and you'll get, you'll get lost in those feelings of trying to get better and get well and figure it all out. You'll get lost in there. And, you know, don't want to, 
be offensive when I don't have to be, but you'll become self-absorbed. And you won't even realize it. Okay? But it, you'll just be so focused on you. So it's actually, oftentimes, once again, there are seasons of needed rest, but it's oftentimes in the step, in the doing, in the facing, in the leaning in, in the putting our hands to the plow again, that we experience the healing that we've been waiting for in isolation and disconnection. So I don't trust this part of the church community. Well, so you're going to feel that tug to join a city group and you're not going to want to. Well, I don't want to serve because churches burn people out. Yes, churches do. Now, I, don't, I don't think anybody says, hey, let's gather a bunch of people together and burn them out. Just work them into the ground. But that does happen. It has happened. So what does it look like for you to engage and serve this time around with boundaries, with conversations on the front end, with being open and honest and saying, listen, I want to be really, I've had people do this with me here. I want to be really clear. I just want to be so clear because I want you to know that if I'm going to step into this, I'm really emotional and there's a lot of hurt attached to it from my past because of this, this, and this. But I feel like the Lord's saying, I've got to go through it to experience healing. Okay? And I'm willing to go through it with people, okay? I, I don't, I want us to go through it. Okay, I want us to go through it. Um, we're going we're gonna to give you guys an opportunity throughout the month of September to say, what does it look like? Okay, this yes, what does it look like for all of us to say yes to this next season of the church? What does it look like? Okay. What does your yes mean? What is God calling you into? What does that mean for you? Okay, so I want you to go ahead and begin to process that and think through that. Because that, this is the next season. This is where we're headed. I do believe that we stand at the cusp of a harvest. I really do believe that. I do believe that there's sheep out there that are going to hear his voice and he's going to hear it through you. They're going to hear his voice and respond, and they're going to say, I belong to him. Like, he's my father. I understand that now. The light's going to come on, and we're just going to have baby Christians all over the place. I'm praying for that. I believe that there is, that can and will happen through us, but I also believe that even though Egypt was going to be delivered like God was radically committed to that, we have to take a step. We have to take a step. So we're going, I, I'm priming the pump for September with you guys because I want you to think through, okay, what is God stirring? What does it mean for me to be a part of this family? What does it look like for me to be a part of this church? What is my yes going to look like? And we're going to continue in this yes series. Now, some of you already are feeling guilt because you're worried that you're going to let somebody down by what you're not going to do. This isn't about guilt. This isn't about shame. This isn't about who's doing more than someone else. This is about thriving and flourishing together. All that God has for us as a church. All that he has for us. Okay, you can stand. We're going to move into a time of prayer. After the service... Is that still happening? Okay. In the gray room? Okay. After the service, uh, one of our own in this family needs a miracle. Uh, his name's Dwight Williams. You guys know Dwight and Cheryl. Okay. Dwight needs a miracle. Uh, so after the time of prayer here, so we're going to do our, our prayer ministry time here, there will be, uh, Dwight's just, he's sick, he's been in the hospital, it happened really fast this week, and he needs a miracle, so we're going to pray. Um, so after the time of prayer ministry here, uh, when we're dismissed, 
there'll be a group around, oh, I don't know, 11.50, 11.55, maybe noonish, uh, gather in the gray room. And we're just gonna, we're gonna bow in and, and pray for Dwight together. Anyone who wants to be a part of that, uh, you're certainly welcome to be. If not, please pray wherever you go this afternoon that God will meet him and bring peace and healing God, I don't know anything else to say this morning except I'm yours and you have me. I want what you want more than what I want. I want to follow you. You don't have to follow me. But at the same time, I'm so grateful that when I wander off, I turn around and you're right there. So thankful for that. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence. So our prayer ministers can come forward and if you would like prayer this morning, you say, okay. Sometimes the first step is just the step to come forward and acknowledge that you need to take a step and open yourself up to what the spirit might wanna say to you. Open yourself up, I'm available. So if you're a prayer minister, you can come forward and then if you would like to receive prayer this morning about anything, maybe you're looking you're confronted with that wall of fear. You know that the Lord's leading, but you're confronted with a wall of fear. And you're like, I, God, I need something to break. I, I, need, I need this fear to break off of me. I need this stronghold to break off of me. God, if there's something demonic going on, I need it to break off of me. I need to be able to respond to you. I want to be free to say yes. God, I pray that you're going to heal people. There's a sense that there's healing that still needs to happen in a lot of hearts as it regards to past experiences. So bring healing. Renew, restore. Give back what the enemy's taken. All right, prayer ministers, you can move around and, and pray. still in your seat, just feel free to worship, feel free to pray for those who are down here, reflect. You can utilize this time as well.